I'm Jim Edmondson, and this is Port Aransas, a collection of memories. Betty Ann Gibbs is here to tell us about her memories of Port Aransas as seen in her husband's photographs. Betty Ann and her husband moved to Port Aransas in June of 1937 from Oklahoma City. They immediately began Gibbs Cottages building the first cottage that year while Mrs. Gibbs returned to Oklahoma to teach school. After returning the next year, she and her husband have lived in Port Aransas and operated Gibbs Cottages till the present. Mrs. Gibbs and her son Gilbert operate Gibbs Cottages today on Allister Street across from the community center. Most of the photographs that Mrs. Gibbs will be speaking of this evening will be photographs that her husband took. Her husband was quite a photographer. He had his own dark room, processing, printing, and all at his own facilities. Most of the photographs he took were in either the late 30s or the 40s, even up through World War II. Ms. Gibbs, welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> How much time did your husband put in on photography? Well, was it a hobby or was it his main? It originally was a hobby, but after we moved down here, he started taking pictures on the waterfront. He'd go down when the boats came in and the fish came in and take the pictures, and then rush back home and put in a few more nails. And go back down then in the afternoon when the boats came in again and take some more pictures, and then he would develop them, the negatives. So in the early afternoon after the boats were all in and stay up most of the night cleaning them and washing them and then when the early morning we try to catch the first ferry out so that the, boat, the pictures could be delivered to the ferryman who would take them on into Aransas where they would go on to Corpus and either be delivered to the caller times or put in the mail for the people who wanted them. Sometimes we deliver them to in Tarbonian or wherever the person was staying at the time we took the pictures. The ph photographs that we'll be looking at this season are part of a permanent collection being housed here at the Port Aransas Public Library. They're beautiful photography uh, by Mrs. Gibbs' husband. Your husband's name? Frank Gibbs. Frank Gibbs. And Mr. Gibbs took these photographs and these photographs were supplied through I, uh, John, Jack Cone of San Antonio. Jack Cone of San Antonio took Mr. Gibbs's negatives yeah. and some of the prints to San Antonio and reprocessed them and uh, gave, donated to the library a nice collection of the Gibbs prints. Also, uh, uh, let's take a look at this first one now. Go. And it's always nice to start with fishing because that's about where Port Aransas usually begins and ends. Most of these are fishing. This is rather a late picture because it, there was no sail fishing when we first came. In the 30s, there wasn't any sail fishing. Uh, what the, it was mostly all tarpon. All then. tarpon and mackerel and king and uh, rather close inshore fishing. They did not go out very far. But. Um, I would say in the late 40s, uh, an old, uh, I, don't really, I guess you'd call him a fisherman, came from Bonham and he built a boat and outrigged it and started this deep sea fishing for these. And uh, then it took hold quite rapidly. So this is probably going to be maybe even in the 50s. It probably, it could be, but I'm not really sure. And I can't tell for sure which building this is either. Oh, that's the only Matthews, sign. Old Matthews that's Place. That's the Old Matthews Place. Old Matthews Place is about where Fisherman, was where, about where Fisherman Wharf is today? No, no, where the Sportsman Center is. Where the Sports Center is. Okay. Uh, in fact, I don't think there's anything down there now, is there? Okay. There's partial, partially. Okay, here's another nice fish picture. And that's a Jew fish, and that was caught off the South Pier, off of the beach, and they brought it in. The Harsh Caldwell Pier? No, it wasn't even there then. Okay, South this Pier. This was in the South Pier that was at the end of what is now Avenue G. 
okay. There was a pier at the end of Avenue G. What I, one thing that I like about this picture is his, uh, his equipment. Yes. The type of pole that he uses and, and the reel. I remember the interview that I did with uh, uh, Mr. Dreyer telling me about some of the older equipment and how valuable and, and made such an interesting collection out. He, he had quite a struggle with that fish. That fish weighed around 600 pounds. And really, he did not land it from the pier. It was walked in from the pier. Yeah, you couldn't pull it up no. that high. Out of he landed on the beach. Not a hoist. Okay, let's take the two fish pictures down there. One of my favorites. And that's the old road to the ferry. The ferry was right now where Fishermen's Okay, for the people that would have difficulty, not everyone would, but for the, you have the tarpon in here in the background. And then over on that side, Shorty's place. Okay. Shorty. Shorty. And then on this side was, this is the old Coast Guard station, which is now way over here. Mm -hmm. and these it's like there's a Keith's Grocery and Market, and, yeah. uh, and another cafe here. Those cars. cars are around the 40s, early 40s. Okay, and these cars, uh, the ferry landing's right down here. That's, that's right. what. That's one that's of the main right. reasons why they're all down here. The ferry landing is right here at this time. The ferry landing didn't move until the 50s. Uh, after this movement took over, he said that they moved the landings to save on fuel and travel time. The, the landing's been changed three times since we've been here. From here, it was moved to what's now Pines Point, around on the point where, where you can't even get to that now, up here, right? and then to where it is now. Okay. So then from around Matthews to Pines Point, back to where it is. This is an interesting one. This is, I know what this is, but let's let you tell that, because I, the Gibbs family was very instrumental in this. Well, this is a beginning of the community center. On Allister Street. On Allister Street, in the block north of our cottages. Uh, the boatman built this building with their own money and time and energy. And most of it, a lot of the material was donated. And all These are boatmen the labor, doing the building? Yes. All of the labor was donated, and almost all of these men are, are boatmen. I, this is old Mr. Woodruff who did the planning of it. Mm -hmm. He was not a boatman. Teddy Matthews is here, and Johnny Matthews, and famous guides from all over the, from this area of the fish officer. And this was... This is Teddy right here. And this was Gibbs property that y'all no, donated, no, or...? No, let me explain about this. The boatmen owned or bought, were able to buy the north end of that lot, but they were not able to get the south part of the lot. So, I... They either did not have enough money or something. Anyway, Mr. Pierce went over to the uh, to the Nueces County Courthouse and found out about the property and bought it at a sheriff's auction and and gave it to the voters and they paid us back over some time later so that. So the, the boatmen so they were able it to with the help of Mr. Gibbs, he, they yeah. purchased it. They were able to build it in the center of that nice big lot instead of just on one end, which would have made it um, a very small place. And there has been one addition yes. added to it. I remember looking at it the other day as I drove by and I could tell. The flooring in that is the pride and joy of, well, it was the pride and joy of Mr. Fitz because it was pecan and gorgeous flooring. And when we square danced in the building, he was so proud of that if I would, he and I and few others would go wrap at the square dance and scrub that floor and wax it again. <laughs> <laughs> Make it look good. Pecan flooring. It's still, that flooring is still very nice in that room. That was built, I think it was around 1950. And from the community center, let's take a look at our fire department. Well, I can't tell you any dates on that. I can tell you, Frank Crown is the preacher here. Dewey Earl Dryer, and there's Nancy Gillespie, and there's Woody Gosley. It was all a volunteer. Are we too close in the over to the boat? Okay, fine. And that was uh, most of it. Even then, the 
Sherman's Auxiliary bought most of the equipment for the fire department. Do you remember how they raised their money then? Or was it donations or benefits? Oh, or I think they, I don't know. <coughs> I really have no idea. I can't remember. I know we had uh, cakewalks and pie sales and all that kind of stuff to get money. Might have a little bit of difficulty fighting a condominium fire with this, this truck today. Right today, I imagine so. A little upsetting. Okay, it looks like we had um, a storm or something. Yes, that was after the 42 storm. And after this is 42. the same street. Uh, it's mm -hmm. at a lower profile to get a foreground here, but this is the same street with the tarpon in back here. No, no, oh. it's the opposite. The tarpon in's here. Oh, I'm and this look, is the road that's going to it. Okay, yeah. going to the landing down here. Mm -hmm. The tarpon in's right here. Mm -hmm. 42 storm. Do you yeah. remember much about it? Well, it was a pretty severe storm. We had uh, uh, quite a bit of damage, particularly on the waterfront. And in a, uh, but up where we live, which is a four blocks, you know, from the waterfront, there was about 30 inches of water on our property. And the current of it went out to what is now this street right down here. Station? No, this side of station. Oh, where the, where, um, what's the name of that condo down here that, on the slough? Teal Harbor. Teal Harbor. Oh. It washed out there. Mm -hmm. Some people who had property there didn't, ended up with no property because the current went zooming out there, and that was the reason that was the slough there until they filled it here. And and it was just sort of a natural dream. Right. I'm wondering what's going to happen. Here's our Barry Landing. Yes, now that's when it was down at Pines Point. And this is now where there's a pier out here, a Station Street pier. This Station Street is put back here. Mm -hmm. And this turned in front to the, what is now the channel of the bay. Uh, this is where uh, Morgan, Morgan, is that his name, that big house? Uh, I don't know. Back behind here. Well, that's the old um, university building. Right, right. I think that's the first biological station yeah. that the man from Austin. Mm -hmm. The channel is out there. It's a All wood. Love the sky on this one. Dramatic. Yeah. Even with the touch of a little seagull. That's a beautiful picture of the beach. <clears throat> this is the beach. Uh, this is spring break 1940 style. <laughs> <laughs> I expect. <laughs> At least you could go down there and get see the water and get in it, really. Now you have trouble at spring break. A few people camping in tents. No cluttered skyline or condos at all along the beach. Mm. People swimming way out here in the water. Beautiful old car. This must have been either just before or just after the war. Most it of these are in the 1941. Mm -hmm. On that kind of This before the war, or just yeah. right at the beginning. Yeah, then, yeah. This is going to be the ferry landing now when it was at Matthews. Or by Matthews, just to the side there. Well, uh, isn't this you know the ferry why coming off the ferry? Yes, coming off the ferry. Mm -hmm. But you know why he took the pictures? It snowed. Is this one a snow picture? I think that's one. Well, wow, we've got a lot of sunshine shadow here. Yeah, it's I don't know. I can't. I can't tell I don't see anything on the top of the January 1940, we had ice snow. It just covered everything. You could really see the snow. Why it even make you think it's snow? It may not be. But yes, this is the old ferries. It was between South Grill and uh, Wilson's Grill. came off there. It, the perspective makes it look that way, but it... It was, wasn't that wide in between. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was just...
ferry boat wide, just one slip was on. Now, is this the South Pier or is this the Horace Caldwell Pier? No, that's the South Pier. Okay, this is the one that was in the Avenue G. Mm -hmm. Up until when, Ms. Gibbs? After, uh, <coughs> let's see, 45 storm took it out. Completely. Yeah. And this is the pier that the gentleman a while ago caught that 500 pound or 600 pound fish off. That was the Jew fish off, uh -huh. about to tell you. Yes, now there was another pier at the same time that was up on the, by the jetty. It was called the North Pier, and it had a uh, wing attached to the North Jetty. I don't know whether we have a picture of that or not. Here, I have one at home. And that was the pier that I enjoyed the most because I could take the children out when they were little, and they could go out the pier and go across to the jetty and up the jetty and back down to the pier. This, these little, do you remember uh, out here they had... Uh, it was just a shelter. A shelter, or was it for fish cleaning, or... No, well... I, did, did they have water out there or anything? Yes, they cleaned fish out there, but mostly these had benches that... Okay, this is where they could come sit. in and get out of the sun yeah. for a while. But they did, we did clean fish out there, too. I drive been. within 50 feet of the water's edge. Yeah, shoot. Another, another, those days are gone forever. Another, another pretty sky. Yes, and that's the ferry landing on Harbor Island over on the other side when right. it was the first first landing that was there when we came in 37. And you can just barely see that old Causeway Road or whatever it was coming in right here, heading out. Um, Is that it? Or? I don't think so. you can even... It, you know where... Um, the Ramses Channel mm -hmm. is, well, this was just around the point right there, on the point practically. Mm -hmm. The Ramses Channel went through the tank farm, far over this side of where it is now, mm -hmm. and right where the railroad track, the railroad track stopped right in there. You can't even, I can't describe it to you, but it was not where, anywhere close to where it is now. Then the, the next one, after this one, was around here on the side of this house. How did Mr. Gibb get his aerial photographs? Well, uh, Billy Sims, who lives in the back of us, um, what's the name of that street? Robert? I don't know what the name of that street is. We didn't have street names when we came. Anyway, uh, Billy had a little Piper Cub. This was before the war. And he flew all over this part of the country. And uh, he would take Mr. Gibbs up, and they would take pictures, and then fly over on St. Joe and land and go fishing, or fly down to Shamrock and get oysters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Billy's, Billy's wife, Pete, and I would go too. We'd get to, and he'd take one of us and drop us off, and then go back and get the other one and drop us off. Only could take two people, one person at a time, and so we were hyper -cutting. And when we'd go down on Shamrock, we would gather oysters and roast them in the cold. The, you can see uh, Cotter Street coming in here, and you can see a little bit of Allister Street going out here, yes. and Station down here. And that's about all the streets that you have. You have a few a other small ones. This one is taken These are our cottages. Gibbs Cottage is here. And this one heading off here, uh, at this angle. That's not there anymore. No, well, the drugstore's on that mm -hmm. corner. Not at that angle anyhow. That would be going around. And population is very sparse. Yeah, you, well, now, is this a little motel this is here? This Ballister. Okay, well, this is Cotter. Yeah, and this is Alistair. And, and, and it, it takes that it. sharp bend. That, in other words, this is where Manjo's is today? That's Manjo's pretty. is just around the corner right here. Okay, okay. And this is the Island Cottages right in here. 
Yeah. And it's the angle of the photo, but that's a very sharp bend. Yeah, for, it is. For and then see, uh, beyond here, there's a little high priest in here. Spanish village is right in here. And they made this road go. Is this a little there. motel here? A little cottage? Those were, they were Bessie Clark's then, mm -hmm. but now they're called, uh, I don't know what they're called. Okay. But you had about, what, three or four places or mm -hmm. so for Let's people see. to stay? Yes, there were those and, and the island cottages. And Ms. Dean's up on the hill called Gulf Beach, and then over in here there was uh, some cottages where the trailer park is now. And the ferry landing was at Klein's Point at this time? Yes. That's See, a good this one. is where it had been. Mm -hmm. They moved it to here. Came was it, was it here or was it here? No, no. Oh, well, See, there's a tarping coming down. Yeah, it was, it was right, right, right there. Mm -hmm. And then Klein's here. And then the last one back over back here. Back over there. Okay, good. Here's an older type sea buoy. I look for leaders on the people that go fishing. Pretty shot. Okay, I think that was I'm going to. Oh, that's the whistle buoy? 2A? I, I'm not positive about that. I don't know the numbers on them. I'm going to move these because they're getting a little bit heavy and they could knock the lamp over. Well, I don't know about the buoys. I don't go out in the water. <laughs> this is a familiar sight. Yes, that's the time I had. That's the way it was when we came. And See, it, it was still in operation then. Oh, yes, the light was still in operation. Until 1950-something. Mm-hmm. 54, I think somebody told me the other day they moved it off over here. And one of the, excuse me, one of the few structures, the, the tower of the lighthouse itself, one of the few structures that's uh, held up very well to all the storms. No, not, that's not the building, but the lighthouse itself. Yeah, it's, I think it gets very little damage, even now. Uh, and a lot, most of these houses, these last two, have stood very well. And They've had some damage. And this is the, and the original lens that was in here, that's the one that's on display mm -hmm. here at the county line. At that's the public one library. That the Confederate buried keep it out of the hands of the Union Army. And then it was buried again during a storm, yes. I think, to protect it also. Well, that's the waterfront. Yeah, the waterfront. When we first came, that was called the Silver King. And then it changed to uh, Barney's place. And then it changed to Matthew's place. And it stayed Matthew's Sportsman Center in Matthew's place, the rest of it. People came there so they could get their bait and stuff and go fishing. They're fishing off of the jetties. And here you're, I imagine they're tarpon fishing. Yeah. Here, these boats out here. Those are the kind of boats they had here when that we looks, first came. That looks like a farley boat. This Probably does. is. The design looks similar. Most of them were the small boats. We also catch, oh, there's a shark and a swordfish. That's a swordfish. Yeah, that was good. Is that the one that they tied his snout back on? One of them they caught out there, and it, in lifting it over the pier, they broke the bill off. So they tied it back on. And Mr. Gibbs took a picture of that, too, and I don't know where that was going. And that's that the South, South Pier. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that fishing had been that great right there off of Avenue G. Well, you know, it's pretty deep water off of it. It's another shot of the same street, but yeah. uh, different, different shadows day. and a little bit different perspective. I haven't seen this one before. All right. Those are the three ferries. 
This is the Estelle, which is the oldest one, and this is an LAB, and this was the new one, the Ruby. They were named after the wives of the officers of the Causeway Company or the Transportation Company. Mrs. Keyberger and Mrs. Uh, Scribner. And Looks like the Estelle probably had a little more wood in it, and these were had a little more metal or iron. Well, the Nellie B and the Estelle were wood, particularly the Estelle one. But the Ruby, I think she's real, the one, the oldest one down here now. Right. They renamed right. it. Mm -hmm. They renamed it, but if you look close, the, pa the plaque used to still be on the side. Oh. That's kind of an unusual picture to get all three of to them. To get all three of them lined up like that, and especially where you can get the names also. Okay, now we'll get to see the, the old causeway, and tell them, tell them about this, Miss Gibbs, please. Well, this was, the, originally it was just a railroad track that came out from Aransas Pass, where the railroad went into Aransas Pass, and it was very firmly built, of course, to carry these engines that were loaded with cotton and talk, and, uh, to come to Harbor Island. Um, where they were translated uh, first right. into other trans transshipped to uh, all kinds of ships went in and out of here. Early, quite early, I guess 1920. But if we look right back down here now, we have a little automobile kind of down there. And this was a turnout. When the train came, and you were on it, you had to get on to this, or if the first one on the ferry that got here, if there was not, I mean, yeah, on the causeway, if there was a car coming toward you, you turned out if you got there first. If he got there first, he turned out and waited for you to come by. It was a little hairy when it got slick with frost. We got rammed one day on our way to school. The right. man couldn't stop because his brakes went out. I could see he couldn't stop, so I stopped. So, but he let his car go against the railing there. So it really, by the time he hit us, it wasn't. And I've heard tales too. I don't necessarily know if it was this color, but I've heard tales too of some of the locals growing up here on the island that it was quite a sport to see who could make it the fastest across who could the country. Who could bluff you out? Yes. That's true. It's another shot of it. This is the approach, it looks like, yeah. to the actual causeway itself. Because here's the bridge part up here, and then here's the other part. It tells you here, they didn't have these originally. Though. Next, Next turnout's turn 500 feet. feet. The, the, along the side pipes there are the, for the transport of the oil that was shipped out to the harbor on and put in the big tanks there. It's these mm -hmm. pipes over here, and then you have a couple more on this side, too. Harbor Island at the, at one time, and that was something I think that came out in the interview with uh, Mrs. What's the lady's name? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Fortson, uh, about uh, at one time it probably shipped more oil than any other port in Texas when it when it had all the pipe connections, um, and it was right during World War II. Yes, it was known as the fastest loading dock in the world. Of course, well, we have to have an our aerial of the, uh, the Gibbs Cottages. Yes, I tell you, that was before our house was built, which is a... Which, uh, which was, was number one, one, which was the first one you built, and the second, third, fourth, fifth. This was fourth, this is fifth, this is sixth, and then seven and eight. Then finally we built 9 and 10, and then in 1948 we built our house here. Then they put the shop in here. And this was before the community center was built. Yes. The community center, uh, the community building, is, right, is this property mm -hmm. right here. And now there's a church. Well, this is the Catholic church. Now there's a church here called that the Church of Christ. It's a nice big building. This see, is the chip down. Which street's Robert Street down here? Down this here. one I think is yeah. Grunder, isn't it, Gilbert? And this one's Robert. Okay, and this is Allister. Mm -hmm. And oh. the original namesake for Port Aransas, the Tarpon. The 
Silver King. Or the Silver King. Beautiful photo. And I remember the few photos that I took of Tarpon. They are so bright and so shiny and sparkle so much that it does affect the focus on the camera. Mm -hmm. It affects the uh, exposure. The exposure. This one is really the best picture. You can see the scales on this one very well. Difficult to do. Many, many of them are caught. That's five of them at one time. I think uh, in the three years I've been here, I have, might have seen five in three mm -hmm. years. Another picture, Matthew's place. And I, this is an excellent shot, though, to see the type of boats that were used mm -hmm. at the time. This is the pilot. And boat. this is the pilot, the Aransas pilot boat. Take the captains out to pilot the ships across the bar. You see, this is uh, um, this is where that. Who comes in, did come in. At Teal Harbor. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And they're landing right down here. Yeah, that was This the is when they were getting with it, hot and heavy on South Pier. That's some heavy fishing. Croker line. It was a croker line. In the October. Really? Everybody was catching fish. Everybody was catching fish. Not baited. you have any idea what year that was? Uh, no, probably. Early 40s or 30s, I was looking at this. Yeah. Oh. I think probably it was... Barney's Place? Last of all, um, to 30. Yes, Barney's Place was when nobody was tied up. The fishing tackle? That was when it was called Barney's Place. Right, I told yeah, you it was called the Silver King, and then Barney's, Barney's and then Matthews. Probably one of the prettiest photos of the Nellie B. Yeah, that's the beautiful one. Yeah, we're well, moving on up now. This, and this is a little bit later, too. Yeah. And you have the Harbor Island tank farm in the back. You eat Pontiac. You can see the ferry landing up on the other side. And for our last photo is an aerial of the harbor. And this will be good to show that uh, <clears throat> your first construction just beginning for what, for the early beginnings of the UT mm -hmm. marine science back here. I think these were built. Mrs. Skib, let me be sure and thank you. But before I really thank you. I feel obligated that I must say that many of the photographs and uh, many of the uh, graphics that we've shown during interviews and everything were, were the products of Mr. Gibbs and uh, we always appreciate his work and the library in Port Aransas is indebted that someone would take the time to uh, record the history of Port Aransas as he did. Oh, I think so too and I'm very appreciative of Mr. Cohn doing these for us too. I think that was a, a very gracious gesture on his part, but he thought Mr. Gibbs did such beautiful work. He just really wanted to do something with him. And also, I normally say, on behalf of the library board of Port Aransas Public Library, but it's difficult for me to say to Ms. Gibbs since she is a member of the Port Aransas Library <laughs> Board. But nevertheless, thank you, Mrs. Gibbs. Yeah, I've enjoyed it.